So here we are in the beautiful town of Bolzano, Italy. It's the very northern tip of Italy, and there he is, the real Utzi the Iceman. You'll see everyone's wearing sterile gowns and gloves and masks. No one wants to contaminate the mummy with their own bacteria for fear that those bacteria could decompose his tissues. And you saw them spraying water over his body to keep that kind of layer of permafrost. One thing a lot of people want to know is why he's in this weird position, almost like he's dabbing. Well, we know that when he died, uh, he probably fell face first, and we'll talk about his cause of death in a minute. He has a wound on his head that could be from being bludgeoned uh, also, or it could be from him falling forward and bumming his head on a rock, we're not sure. But it looks like the cause of death is an arrow. Interesting. <laughs> I'm so glad you made it. Come on in. Welcome to the DNA Learning Center. I'm Amanda, and I'm going to show you around the Our Human Inheritance exhibit. Follow me. We're going to start with the man of the hour, Otzi the Iceman. This is the world's first replica of Otzi the Iceman, one of the world's most famous mummies. You might be wondering, how did we know his name? It's a really good question. I'm asked that question very often. If you look up on the wall, you'll see the spelling. First, he was just the ice man, because this mummy was found buried in ice. But then came the nickname Utzi, because he was found in the Utzel Alps, which is a range that spans from Austria down into Italy. In fact, if you look at the wall behind our replica of Utzi the ice man, that is the actual mountainside where this mummy was recovered. So I'm going to spend some time today telling you a little bit about why this find was so important to our understanding of what life was like for people during the Neolithic. Let's see, the Iceman was found in Italy by some hikers who happened to be on vacation. So they proceeded to try to remove the body from the ice with drills. Well, drilling was not a very good idea because poor Utzi's body was damaged. What they wound up having to do was try to melt the ice around his body, which took several days. And while they were melting the ice around his body, they started to find some of his belongings, things that he had with him when he died on the mountain. We have replicas here in our exhibit of his belongings, including his clothing and some of the things he had been carrying with him before he died. These were pretty clear indicators that it was likely he was not a hiker who had gone missing a few decades prior, but maybe a little more ancient than they, than they originally thought. I'm going to start with his clothing. So let's see shoes are a real find. Some of the finest shoes from this period of time that anthropologists and archaeologists have ever seen. They may not look very fancy to you, but they were very carefully crafted out of tree bast. Amazing. So, I'm sure you're all wondering, based on the things he was carrying with him, how old is this man? Do we think he was a hiker? I don't think that a hiker 60 years ago would have been carrying around a copper axe. So everyone knew, after his find, that he was probably much older. Now, I don't know what you would guess. I'd probably guess maybe he's a few hundred years old. Well, let's go back to the mummy. Take a look. He looks pretty old. <laughs> a technique called carbon dating was used shortly after he was taken to Austria for his first set of analysis. And carbon dating revealed, are you ready? That he was 5,300 years old. Wow. He lived several hundred years before Stonehenge was built a few hundred years before there were any big Egyptian pyramids built. He's old. So how did his body remain in such good condition? Well, you may not think it's good condition, but think about it. Usually when someone dies, what happens to the soft parts of the body, like the skin and the muscle and the organs? They decompose. There are microorganisms that will come along and break down all of those soft tissues. And what would we expect to find 5,000 years later if we're lucky? Maybe some bones. But his whole body was completely preserved. 
So what was different about his body than most average people? Well, it wasn't what was different about his body. It's where his body was. So don't forget, he was found on a mountain over 10,000 feet up in the air above sea level. I don't know if you've ever been on the top of a mountain, but it can be very cold. There's dry wind blowing around. And what scientists think is that within a short period of time after he died, he was probably covered by a layer of snow. And his tissues started to freeze quite fast. All the microorganisms that probably would have started to decompose the body died too. And then, over a period of time, that very cold, dry wind wicked the moisture out of his tissues. All of the water was pulled out, and his body pretty much, in essence, was freeze-dried. He looks a little freeze-dried, but what we can see is his skin still surrounding his body. And it's not just his skin that's still there. Inside the skin are all of his organs, the whole digestive system, the brain, the heart. So we have a whole human body. And from that body, there are all kinds of interesting things we can learn. Now, I do want to show you the damage. So if you come around this side, you'll see there's a large part of his backside missing. So Utsi did not live with only half a backside. This is what happened when researchers tried to remove him with pneumatic drills. His body was quite delicate and they lost a piece. I was actually asked recently, what did they do with the piece that was removed? I have no idea. <laughs> I would imagine that it traveled to Austria with the rest of his body, and maybe it was helpful in some of the analysis because they had some tissue that had already been removed from his body. But what this damage did was it exposed some of his internal organs. One thing a lot of people want to know is why he's in this weird position, almost like he's dabbing. Well, we know that when he died, uh, he probably fell face first, and we'll talk about his cause of death in a minute. We also know that at some point after his death, the glacier that he was buried under actually moved, and it moved him as well, and that's why he wound up in that odd position it's why his ears look kind of flat on the edges and his lip and his nose are kind of mushed. But I think he looks pretty good for someone who's over 5,000 years old. Why was he on the mountain? And how did he die? Well, I'll tell you, for about 10 years, no one knew how he died. Uh, there was something overlooked. Come this way, I'll show you. About 10 years after he was found, people were scanning CAT scans and x-rays, and they found an arrowhead lodged inside his chest. It hadn't been identified until now. And then when they looked at the mummy, there was a tiny little scar where this arrowhead had entered. What we think is that he was shot from behind. You can see the opening in his skin between his shoulder blade and his shoulder bones up there. Tiny, tiny little wound. He had many wounds, many fresh wounds, some on his hands. It was clear that he had been in some kind of combat situation, at least within the last few days of his dying. But this wound was somewhat overlooked. It looks insignificant. But what we know now is that someone, a sharpshooter, shot him from behind, the arrowhead entered through that little opening and hit a subclavian artery, a major artery. And probably within five minutes, he bled to death. He has a wound on his head that could be from being bludgeoned uh, also, or it could be from him falling forward and bumming his head on a rock, we're not sure. But it looks like the cause of death is an arrow. Interestingly, the shaft of the arrow that entered his shoulder wasn't found anywhere in the area. Hmm. Um, maybe he tried to pick it up and, or he tried to remove it and it snapped off and it got lost at the scene. Maybe the person who shot him removed it to remove any evidence that they were involved in his killing. Why would they shoot him? We don't know.